What to Play presents the top 10 PC simulation games of the last three years, all arranged by play scores. The play score is an average of gamer and critic ratings. At number 10 is Bridge Constructor Portal. Opening our list is a team up between Aperture Labs and Bridge Constructors. Take the role of an employee of Aperture Science and build bridges, ramps, and other constructions in numerous test chambers. However, instead of that regular bridge constructing, you'll be able to take things easier, or complicated, with the presence of these physics-defying portals. And if you're expecting a pure portal game, this ain't it. The kick is a lie, but the bridge constructing is real. Solve a myriad of puzzles similar to Portal's problems, but without the ever-present portal gun. Game Grin's Dominoid gave it a 9 out of 10, praising the game's steep learning curve and difficulty, saying that it's tough as nails and you'll need to put some hours into it if you want to complete it. But it's addictive and totally worth it. There is an apparent challenge here, and it's not for kids who don't like science. There's enough room for brain teasers in each level, and it requires careful thinking and planning. It has a play score of an 8.24. At number 9 is Dungeons 3. There isn't a lot of games that let you play the bad guy, let alone the embodiment of evil. Calypso Media's RTS game lets you finally play as that one crazy guy who designs a treacherous dungeon. Dungeons 3 is a continuation of the previous dungeon titles, but this time there are enough resources for you to mess around with against the helpless heroes that venture into your personal hell. Even Game Watcher gave this one an 8.5, citing that Dungeons 3 is plain, straight, addictive fun from start to finish. 3 manages to add more nuance to the art of the Dungeon Keeper titles, while adding a bit of meta humor into the mix. But despite the additional content, the game is far from perfect. Game Grin gave it a 7.5 out of 10, saying that it's a fun, interesting dungeon builder that lacks confidence in its own identity. It doesn't really have that same oomph that was once captured us in the previous titles, but it does make up for its massive amount of things to do. In short, it's not quite bad. It receives a play score of an 8.29. Number 8 is Parkitect. This game is clearly made for those who were still around during the early days of Roller Coaster Tycoon. It also extends to those who spent hours and hours building that perfect railway system. Parkitect is a love letter to that kind of feeling. It puts you once again as a businessman responsible to build the best theme park in the world. How would you create that perfect park? It's all up to you. Throughout your proprietorship, you'll be doing most of that Walt Disney stuff. Destructoid loved this game so much they gave it a 9 out of 10, asking the question, is this game a modern day roller coaster tycoon? The answer is an absolute yes. And as a Steam title, the game is open for fun experimentation in the Steam Workshop, where you can learn and find some nifty techniques to gain more profit. PC Gamer also had something to say. They gave it a 7.5 out of 10, also saying that it's fun and mechanically sound, but not something you're going to queue up hours for. But overall, it has a play score of an 8.33. Number 7 is Do Not Feed the Monkeys. Concepts like these are the reason why we decided to limit these games of the last 3 years. Otherwise, they'd be buried with the huge amount of strategy games on the PC. Do Not Feed the Monkeys is an interesting game where your only job is to watch strangers through surveillance cameras. The monkeys aren't really monkeys per se. These are human subjects you're tasked to spy on. It's up to you if you want to mess around or simply watch how their everyday lives go. Either way, your decisions will impact the game's ending. And once again, Game Reactor gave it an 8 out of 10, claiming that it's one of those little gems that you have to try because it does things differently and exemplifies the diversity and creativity on display on the indie scene. For a game about voyeurism, it does so well that it doesn't take itself seriously, although it has its fair share of social commentary that speaks a lot about our society. But most of all, you're basically watching people do stupid things. It has a play score of an 8.38. At number 6 is Frostpunk. 
From the team that gave us the emotionally wrecking survival game This War of Mine, they have another title that will give us an even bigger responsibility for the future of the human race. Frostpunk is a beautiful city-building game with a depressing story about a sunless Earth. In short, everything is freezing cold. As an overseer, you are tasked to lead these survivors into a new tomorrow. Battle frostbites and hypothermia by building massive steam-powered machines that are capable of bringing heat and warmth to your people. Hardcore Gamer gave this an 8 out of 10, saying that hours will go by as you are consumed into the doom and gloom of your city while trying to make sure people don't die. Its chilling morality lets you pick sides depending on which laws you sign. You could assert your dominance under a disciplinary system, or bring hope to people through religious means. There are multiple ways to save your people, and that's where Frostpunk shines. Even GameSpot gave this one a 9 out of 10, praising the game's unique survival elements, saying that Frostpunk is among the best overall takes on a survival city builder to date. Winter has finally come, and climate change is real, guys. Come on. The game receives a play score of an 8.52. Number 5 is Two Point Hospital. Apart from building roller coasters, simulations are also saving lives through medical breakthroughs, and a whole lot of silliness in between. Sega's Two Point Hospital is a hospital building game where you construct the most efficient medical facility and cure those who fall ill from unusual diseases. However, the game is not as normal as you think it'd be. Although it deals with illnesses, the patients you meet aren't exactly part of the status quo. There are aliens to probe, mummies to heal, and even robots to fix. Rachel Weber from GamesRadar applauded the game's design, giving it a perfect 10, saying that it's taken the funny bones and beating hearts of the original and transplanted them into an entirely new mini-universe of glee and medical mischief. And like most of these other titles, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Any moment you'll be dealing with a massive horde of the undead, or a swarm of extraterrestrial freaks. Aside from maybe its functionality issues, Two Point Hospital is a wellspring of comedy that might tickle your funny bones. It has a play score of an 8.54. Number 4 is Oxygen Not Included. The makers of Don't Starve are back with another fantastic title that tests your wits, skills, and patience. This sci-fi simulation game takes you to the harsh reaches of space, where you survive and make do with your limited resources. Everything you do in this space colony is under your control. As the overseer, make sure everything is in check because just when you thought you had it all figured out, the game continues to troll you in the most unexpected ways possible. UK reviewer Metroco UK gave it an 8 out of 10, praising the game's design, saying that Oxygen Not Included is a funny, clever, and extremely complex mix of management simulator and survival game that manages to make abject failure almost as entertaining as success. There are numerous solutions to handle each problem, and this game isn't all too considerate of your numerous responsibilities. It continues to mess you up no matter the costs, and that's the major challenge and one of the best features of this title. It has a play score of an 8.64. Second place is Slime Rancher, probably the most wholesome entry on this list. Slime Rancher is an adorable and straightforward adventure where you manage a ranch and raise cute extraterrestrial slimes. As a young rancher who recently got access to this renowned property, you are tasked to get it up and running. There's a plethora of fun things to do that's reminiscent to farm sim classics like Harvest Moon. Instead of that 2D feel, this first-person simulator has a modern touch. You're left to explore this sprawling world loaded with secrets and hidden treasures. CG Magazine's Jed Whittaker gave it a perfect 10, saying that Slime Rancher is one of the cutest games out there. But although the game has a charming premise, 
some of the concerns stem from its repetitiveness. PC Gamer gave it a 6.5, criticizing the game's gameplay, saying that it's a slight and repetitive but cute farming game. Slime Rancher doesn't quite reach the heights of its subgenre, but if you're into this fantastic slime ranching experience, there's no stopping you. It's the perfect stress reliever after a long day. It receives a play score of an 8.84. And the best PC simulation game of the last three years is none other than RimWorld. After years in early access, it's about time Ludeon Studios unleashes their sci-fi colony simulator where you create your own mesmerizing story and help these clash-landed survivors. Powered by an intelligent AI storyteller, every scenario is randomly generated, adding more depth to its survival elements. We built, mined, harvested, Endured frightful conditions. And manhunting rabbits. Beastly pirates raided us. It feels like watching a different sci-fi story in each passing moment. Characters have different paths and the planet isn't all too friendly with the human race. Game Reactor's Mike Holmes gave it a perfect 10, praising the game's allure, saying that it's the kind of game that you'll wake up thinking about, that you'll sink untold hours into, that'll run in the background while life goes on all around you. And he's not lying. Most players on Steam racked up 200 hours and even more of their game time. But hey, like most games, RimWorld isn't close to perfect. PC gamer Sam Greer had something to say about the game's design. Although its AI-generated story is interesting, he iterated that you can't help but begin to see the gears and cogs in the machine. But amidst all that, RimWorld is a realistic take on the sci-fi space sim genre, with a play score of an 